Imagine you're the ruler of a castle and your kingdom is under attack. How would you keep enemy forces from coming in and taking your throne? The first thing that you would do is to make sure you had defenses to keep enemies from breaching the outer walls of your kingdom. If these enemies got in, you'd need centuries to be on the lookout for them. And if those centuries saw enemies get into the castle, they'd need to sound the alarm, alerting your soldiers to come in and kill the invaders. It might sound like we're getting a little medieval, but this is exactly how your immune system protects you from pathogens like viruses and bacteria. If we think of your body as a castle, your skin is the kingdom at large. It is the biggest barrier between you and the outside world. Your skin is coated in antimicrobial compounds and beneficial bacteria, which you can think of as the peasant army that's going to defend your land from the invaders. The vulnerable areas not covered in skin have their own defenses. Our eyes make tears, our mouths make saliva, and our noses make snot. All of these contain chemicals that kill bacteria, viruses, and other potential pathogens. Sure, when we think of snot, it's a little gross, but it has an important job. It surrounds the pathogens and runs them out of your body, much the way a pitchfork carrying mob would run out invaders from their land. And it does not matter who the invader is, the response is the same. This kind of immunity is called innate immunity because it does not adapt to specific threats. It's more of a generalized attack. The innate immune system also includes chemicals like the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Your immune system has turned that acid's destructive power into an ally to kill pathogens that you might unknowingly eat. All of these things keep pathogens from entering your body, but what do we do if they get past those defenses? As I said before, we need to be able to tell the bad guys apart from the good guys. This is where the centuries come in. In your body, these are the white blood cells. And just like a castle would have sword fighters and archers and guys manning catapults, different white blood cells have different jobs. Let's take a closer look using the Visible Biology app, which is where we get all of these awesome 3D visuals in these videos. I like to use this with my students because they don't need a microscope at home and it's a lot more fun and interactive than a textbook. Whether you're a biology instructor or a student, you should definitely check out visiblebody.com to learn more. Okay, so how can cells tell the good guys from the bad guys? On their surface, cells have glycoproteins or surface antigens. These are like molecular name tags and your immune cells have receptors to check and make sure that anyone they run into belongs. In some cases, the ones that don't belong are super obvious. For example, they may have pathogen-associated molecular patterns, or PAMPs, which is basically a molecular motif that a lot of your immune cells are on the lookout for. And it's like the pathogen wearing a name tag that says, hello, my name is bad guy. When an immune cell recognizes a pathogen name tag, it needs to mount a response. What you're seeing right now is a phagocyte. It gets its name from the Greek word phago, meaning to eat, and cyto, meaning cell. So it's going to do what it's named to do. It's going to find the baddies and eat them. These cells have vesicles, which are like little pouches. And in this case, the vesicles are filled with digestive enzymes that break down the pathogen and expel the harmless remains. Types of phagocytes include macrophages, neutrophils, and dendritic cells. This one in particular is a neutrophil. Let's pop a label on it. When your immune system mounts a response to a potential baddie, neutrophils are the first on the scene and can even begin the repair process if there's damaged tissue. Now, here's where it's gonna get real medieval on whoever attacks the castle, because the dendritic cells and the macrophages keep a portion of the desiccated and dead pathogen and then they incorporate it into their cell membrane. This acts as a molecular mugshot that they show the other centuries so that everyone knows exactly what they're looking for. So now that we've been introduced to our sword carrying knights, it's time to look at our fighters manning catapults and our archers. Eosinophils and basophils are granulocytes, which are white blood cells with secretory granules in their cytoplasm. 
These granules are basically projectile weapons that they throw at enemy pathogens. Eosinophils and basophils cause inflammation, which sounds the alarm and brings more blood and warmth to the area. The blood brings more white blood cell soldiers and the warmth charges them up with a blood rage so they can join into the melee. Because the response is so generalized, it's not always perfect. Sometimes an immune cell gets it a little bit wrong. Instead of responding to an invading pathogen, your basophils might try to fight something more harmless like a house cat or pollen. In the case of allergies, your basophils release their inflammatory compound histamine, and that brings a lot of inflammation, other cells, and mucus to your nasal passages. Thanks for nothing, basophils. Okay, before we wrap things up, let's think about our castle again. Which barriers keep the bad guys from getting in, and who are the different types of soldiers? If you said one of these for barriers, good job. Barriers include acids, mucus, and antimicrobial compounds such as those found in tears or on your skin. Now on to the soldiers. We've got phagocytes, which are the first responders. They include macrophages, neutrophils, and dendritic cells. These are the guys that eat the pathogens. Basophils and eosinophils, on the other hand, use projectile attacks to deal with pathogens. They also release compounds which can lead to inflammation bringing more soldiers to the party. And that's innate immunity in a nutshell, or a castle. Stay tuned for part two, where we get really medieval on adaptive immunity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you're interested in taking a 3D dive into biology, check out Visible Biology by going to visiblebody.com.